we're just gonna I'm gonna yeah. everyone, Kelly Kay here. Today we're going to be going through Power BI goals, Power BI data types, Power BI kids and so much more. Join us for the Power BI community show starting now. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on your time zone, of course. Welcome to our very first Power BI community show. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelly Kay, and I'm the Power BI community engagement lead. Um, I work as a uh, Power BI community program manager with the community success team. The community success team is a team led by Heather Newman, and we manage, and Heather owns, the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 community success uh, areas. Um, each community has a, a community manager, and we're going to get to meet some of those community managers in our future episodes with our collaborative sessions. <laughs> I'll be hosting the Power BI Community Show streamed live on the Power BI YouTube channel as well as the Power Platform YouTube channel. Um, my Twitter is at ms underscore Kelly K. That's ms underscore K-E-L-L-Y-K-A-Y-E. And you can also access the show after the broadcast via the YouTube uh, channel or community.powerbi.com. Okay, let's start with explaining what is the Power BI Community Show all about? Well, the Power BI Community Show is where we talk about everything Power BI, all things Power BI. Our show is produced by the amazing Daniel Zana. Shout out to Daniel, our producer. Daniel, hi, are you there? <laughs> hi, Daniel. And we have Heather Hernandez, our amazing community manager, who will be answering our Power BI community questions in the, hat, in the chat. Hi, Heather. I think she's uh, in the chat there. And uh, Heather answers questions with the community for the community, both during this episode and after. Every couple of weeks, we'll have a few short segments ranging from what's up in Power BI, tips for creating amazing Power BI reports, interviews with Microsoft insiders at Power BI, vivid visuals, which is part of our series to show people how they can use their visuals with the data types that they have. <clears throat> Excuse me. But more importantly, um, we're going to be celebrating you our wonderful Power BI community. Um, we're going to be doing members of the month, community members of the month, MVP of the month, user group of the month, and we're bringing back the data stories of the month. We'll also be, we'll also be talking to user group leaders and members. We want you to stay until the end of this episode to find out how you can get some of those exceptional, fantastic giveaways. Okay, enough of that. Let's kick off our show with our Microsoft Data Platform MVP, the one and only Belinda Allen from, <clears throat> from Sashi Computing. Hello, Kelly. Hi, how are you, Belinda? I'm doing fantastic, thanks. I'm super excited to be here. First episode, first guest. So yes, you yes, you are. First episode, first guest. We're super excited to have you. Thank you so much for hey. taking the time. We love your work and we can't wait to see what you've got to show us today. Thank you. And and we can contact you at uh, MS Belinda Allen. Right? Yes, on Twitter. Ms. Belinda Allen, that's right. Uh, Twitter, email, uh, well, not email, but the website. So absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited to be showing you something that um, just gets me excited every time I see it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick right here. And um, if it's a little blurry, my apologies, everybody, because I blew up the resolution so that you could see there's no smoke and mirrors here. So I'm going to be showing you data types, um, Excel data types, 
actually organizational types in Excel. So this is a data set and normally I don't put a visual in here, but I wanted you to see that I'm connecting to data. I happen to be connecting to Dy Dynamics Business Central data and I'm looking at customer information and balance due. Now the only thing, so I have all this there, the only thing I'm doing different in order to make this data appear in Excel is in the modeling area, if I select customers, I have turned on in properties, this feature down here at the bottom that says is featured table. And if you turn it on, then this window pops up for a description and it's going to ask me, all right, what is your key column? So this has to be unique for each row. So customer number, and then I'm gonna replace customer number with the customer name. That's it. So once I do that, I just simply publish it to the Power BI service. Now let me switch over to Excel really fast. So one of the things that I want to show you in Excel you may or may not be aware of is something called data types. And data types are some automatic connections. So for example, I'm going to put in two companies that I have stock with, Microsoft and Tesla. And I'm just going to highlight both of those. And now under data types, there are three that come out of the box, organizational stocks and geography. Geography is if I scroll down a bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and select stocks and lo and behold, there's Microsoft and Tesla because it recognized the stock symbol and I could even go in and get the 52 week high. Now I'm gonna use the same uh, feature inside of Excel to access that featured data set. Now we know we all can simply from data come in and go to get data and connect to our data sets right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm gonna come in and just enter in my customer numbers, that's it. And then I'm going to highlight those customer numbers. And now I have this from my organization. Mm -hmm. These are different uh, data sets or data queries actually within a data set that I've connected to. And you can see I have my description and everything right here. I'm gonna select customers and notice, let me just close out that warning about the stock. Don't use it for real stuff like taxes. Okay, and so um, now I have my customer names here and then I could even come in and get customer balances and so forth. And this is a really, cool feature. So I'm going to just put this in a table really fast. So why would somebody want to use this? Um, yes. Well, first of all, you could see how easy it was to connect to data. So if somebody mm -hmm. wants their data in Excel, they don't have to dump it out or go and export and refresh and do all that. They could just simply come right in here. And if I wanted to add a new customer, I'm going to add an additional customer and it automatically will populate that data for me as well. I'm not connected. I know it's amazing, isn't it? It's such an aha <laughs> moment. I'm not connected to anything in particularly, right? I'm just connected using my Azure Active Directory. Mm -hmm. I've logged into my Office 365 Excel using my same account that I use for the Power BI service and I'm connecting to Power BI service. Yeah. And furthermore, if I want to refresh, I just click on data and refresh and boom, it will refresh with real data. So I am all about user adoption this year. And this is a great way to help convert some people. We're using the already um, organized data model that we hopefully take great care in organizing so that it's one point of truth and um, everyone can access it. Isn't that shocking, Kelly? I, I love it. This is amazing. How much time is this going to save us? Seriously. Oh, totally, totally. Yes. Yes. My gosh, what's what's a, an ideal scenario for this? Um, for somebody who um, they they perhaps want to be able to access information about data, in this case, maybe accounting data, they want to see what the customer's balances are. And so this is a great way for them to get access to it without having to understand how the data is organized or get into any kind of complexity of the data without having to deal with connection types or exporting. And this is really a powerful thing. So yeah. as, as the admins and the designers of data models, this is a great way for us to disseminate information, taking advantage of the power of Power BI, no pun intended, and the Excel that everybody knows and loves. 
Well, we know that this is fantastic. And we know Power BI and Excel are always better together. I do have my IXL t-shirt. I will find that maybe this episode or next episode. But um, <laughs> yeah, I love this. I love Me this. And too. How, how long have you used this? Um, I have only used this for about a month. I didn't even okay. know it was there. And yeah, someone from micro, on the Microsoft team said, of course you could use it. And then <laughs> so a group of us got together and we hammered it out. It took virtually no time at all. And now I can't stop using it. I absolutely love it. It's super simple. It's so intuitive and it saves us so much time. Thank you so sure much, Linda, for, for showing this, us this fantastic demo today. Um, yeah, please, please stay for the rest of the episode and, you know, let's critique the next one coming up with uh, <laughs> Treb, Mike and Tommy, which I can't wait. I can't wait for all. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, sure. everyone, you know, please let Belinda know how much you love that demo and uh, if you'll be using it. And if you are using it, go to community.powerbi.com, register and just tell us a little bit about it. Maybe um, publish a data story and you might be able to be in the running for some fantastic Power BI giveaways. Okay, up next, we had a chance to chat with the amazing Microsoft Data Platform MVP, Indira Bandari and her daughter, Medha Bandari, who have an interesting venture, which is super exciting. And it's teaching uh, the younger generation Power BI, and it's all about Power BI kids. Let's take a look. Hi, Indira and Medha. Thank you so much for being on the Power BI Community Show. Why don't you uh, take a moment to introduce yourselves? Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hi, I'm Indira Bandari. Hi, I'm Mitha Bandari. I'm currently working as a biz business consultant uh, in Datacom in, here in New Zealand. I have been in the data space for the last 18 years, and I really enjoy working with data. I'm very passionate about data. In my past time, I teach kids all about technology. I started off with uh, teaching coding with coding for kids. And uh, now I teach SQL and Power BI for uh, 10 to 15 year old kids. Do you want to go? Yeah. Um, uh, hi, I'm a 15 year old student at Mount Albert Grammar School in Auckland, New Zealand. And um, I've always had a passion for technology since I was very young. And in lockdown 2020, I started my own um, YouTube channel um, called NZ Tech Girl. Um, and in this YouTube channel, I provide videos, um, Excel videos, and I even started a coding for kids series. Um, I also started presenting in meetups um, in like Power BI meetups in Auckland. And that was a great way, um, a really great experience for me um, to be able to speak in front of a lot of Power BI users. Um, and I also started teaching at Kids Tech and Zed's Coding for Kids um, classes. And I taught kids from um, eight to 10 years old. And I felt like it was a great experience for me to build on my skills. That's me. Wow. That sounds absolutely fantastic and super impressive. So I understand you have a new series out. Um, tell us a little bit about that. It's Power BI Kids, right? Um, so the Power BI Kids series is um, basically a whole series of small videos and um in these videos, um, I show you how you can download Power BI, um, what you need um, in order to download Power BI. And um, after you download Power BI, I'll be showing you how you work with it and how you can use it. Wow, that's great. Okay, so what made you want to do a series about um, Power BI, you know, for kids? Uh, I feel like Power BI has personally been really helpful to me. Um, as I'm still only 15 years old. And um, I feel like it's really been useful in school too, so every everyday life. Um, for example, in subjects like math, um, where, you, um, where you're given data and um, you're meant to put it into a bar graph or chart, 
Um, I feel like Power BI has really helped me to analytically think this and um, um, just use my Power BI knowledge into subjects like math. And yeah, and I feel like I feel like kids have um, more potential than you think. So I feel like the, um, in this series, um, they can show their potential, I guess. It's fantastic that you're using it for school as an extra tool in your toolbox. So tell us, where can we check out Power BI Kids? You can uh, log into the Power BI uh, community and then the videos will be posted there and then you can check in. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the Power BI community show. And oh, before I forget, where can we connect with you online? Is it LinkedIn, I think? Yes. Uh, my LinkedIn is Indira hyphen Bandari. And my LinkedIn is Medha Bandari. Um, also, um, if you're interested in my Excel videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is NZ Tech Girl. Fantastic. And we'll be putting those links in the show notes and the video description below. Thank you again for joining us today on the Power BI Community Show. Have a great day. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that was fantastic. Um, well, uh, Kelly will be right back. Here she is. Hi, Kelly. Thanks so much. I apologize. My internet just went down So at home. So we're having some fun times here <laughs> on our first episode. Okay. Well, so thank you so much to Medha and Indira Bandari and teaching us um, how to teach the next generation about Power BI. So make sure you go to community.powerbi.com. We're going to have a Power BI Kids series there. And uh, Indira and Medha will be posting a lot more there for you to watch and hopefully teach your kids as well. Okay, up next, I have my fellow chef cook, Treb Gatt from Marquee Insights. And he'll be introducing a great demo uh, by two other Microsoft MVPs, data platform MVPs, Mike Carlo from Power BI Tips and Tommy Puglia from CompTIA. And uh, I think for this, I have to have my little hat on, right? You do, Is that right, you do. Trip? Because you're always wearing uh, have... a fedora. Yes, we do fedora fundraisers for St. Jude's Hospital. So this has become part of our brand. And uh, we hope to do one actually at an upcoming conference in uh, April, uh, yeah, in an April timeframe. So more on that coming. So thanks for having me. Oh, look, it's 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 our pleasure and you know our honor to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time. So yep. uh, for those of you who don't know, um, who don't know you, hard to believe, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about you? So I'm Treb Gott. Uh, I used to be an office MVP uh, before, so I've actually been an MVP almost 10 years now. Uh, but so it made the switch over to the better side with Power BI uh, back when it first came out. And I founded a company called Marquee Insights where we build data cultures. And for the last year, we've been working with the goals development team to test and kick the tires on Power BI goals. So I'm here to talk about goals. Awesome. Okay. And we love Power BI goals. We definitely use them a lot uh, within our organization for our mm -hmm. OKRs. But um, for the audience, please, let's, um, why don't you tell us, what are Power BI goals? So Power BI goals really are the, I, I would say the first feature that Power mm -hmm. BI has come out with specifically for executives and senior managers or really anybody who needs to understand what are you working toward versus what you're just working on because a lot of our reports tend to be you know what we're working on right now the other thing about goals is that it is now available to everyone everybody who has a pro license or premium license or premium per user you have goals today this is huge huge news that's fantastic i i, I mean we lo i love how we use Power BI goals within our um, our own scorecard and our OKRs, and I agree. A lot of the uh, reports aren't really um, they're not really geared to what we're going to be working on, you know, to our goals. So, what's what's um, most excited you about Power BI goals? Well, it's kind of hard to narrow it down actually, but I'll, I'll give it a shot here uh, because we've been working <laughs> with it for a while. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of goodness to be had here. But I think the one thing I really like about it is the fact that it focus you, focuses you on getting to the point. I mean, realistically, people need answers, not more reports. 
Goals delivers this. No more do you have to spend half the meeting looking for that answer that you know is on one of your 50 or 60 reports because now you've got your scorecard that lays it out for you uh, immediately. And so you can see right then and there, here are the metrics that matter to me and these are going to enable my decision-making process. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all sitting on teams these days. And frankly, the thought of sitting through yet another meeting, being PowerPointed to death for an hour just to come up with the latest status just doesn't feel like a good experience. And so goals really helps you by presenting both the metric and the status, the, co the context, and the comments right in one place. And then lastly, I really like the fact that Power BI has made this extremely easy to implement. One of the feedback items that we gave them early on was not everybody has reports for this stuff. So they've allowed you now to create manually maintained goals mixed with report connected goals, which I know we're going to see later in the demo. And you can choose when you want to convert from one to the other. So it's just amazing. There's so much to be excited about. Oh, look, this, it's, I, I love using it. It's just fantastic. And I share your excitement. Um, you know, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to know, you, you work with a lot of companies. So how do yeah. you see companies working and using Power BI goals today? Well, and it, with COVID and the lockdowns and everything, I mean, we, we have engaged with a lot of executive teams to come up with a better way to manage their remote and hybrid workforces. So what we're seeing is a lot of companies now are rolling out management frameworks. Uh, one of the most common one is something called objectives and key results, which you may know better as OKR. Okay. I know I've got an OKR board I got to fill out and whatnot. Now, why OKRs? Well, they're using the OKRs to ensure that everybody is working on what is most important. And this is a known framework, if you will. It's been around for years, which is good because it means we don't have to do a lot of figuring it out. But what it does do is it delivers focus and clarity on what the outcome is, and goals is a great way to support this. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing is people are taking a good, hard look at their status reporting. Uh, there's a lot of disjointed uh, things in place today. We get them through email with PowerPoint and all this other stuff. And it's very hard to really get an understanding of where everything is. So the check-in feature is now becoming the default status report place where it's one place to go enter it, one place to see everything. It's really the secret sauce, if you will, of goals. But when you're looking at those check-ins, the ability to go back and look through history and see exactly what has happened with this goal over time and see how we've gotten to this state where it is amazing. It's something we really haven't had a good ability to do in all the tools we've had before. That's awesome. I, I, I totally agree with you. So, you know, what do you see are the biggest benefits that companies are seeing now with well, using Power BI goals? You know, I really see two. Uh, okay. And it's, it's kind of hard to pick, so I'll, I'll tell you about them. But basically what we're seeing is a, a building trust, if you will, between our managers and the remote and hybrid employees that people are actually working really hard. They're making an impact. And because now we've got a clear way to show this, we can actually see how they're doing, and it actually builds team morale. Uh, the flip side of this though, it's sort of like two sides of the same coin, is we're seeing better engagement from senior management. One of the problems that you have when you use PowerPoint and whatnot to uh, just you know to give status is it's not clear to them where are they supposed to engage. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've seen emerge over the last year is people are using the status indicator not to represent the health of the goal, but rather to represent the engagement desired from the executive. So for example, if it's green, it means, well, we're informing you that everything is really good and we're just letting you know, I'll, there we go. I'll go. If it's yellow, we need you, senior manager, to enable the team to help us fix a problem because we're blocked and we need an approval or something. Mm -hmm. But if it turns red, we need you to actually engage with the team because we have a serious problem that we need you to get there. So I think from both perspectives, we're seeing a lot more engagement with this. I'm really excited by the results. I'm totally on board with that. It's, um, you know, having actions to insights is so important. Yeah. It, when, when people start out, it's great to have your data 
visualized in Power BI because it, in, it's so interactive, it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is to give the report consumers some information and then to be able to give them information straight away, you know, what's the status. So I, I love that you said that. I love that. Well, um, and the mobile yeah. experience, I have to say, is amazing. In fact, I think it's better on mobile oh. than it is on the web. Just, just to throw that out because Maya's team has done an amazing job. Okay, okay. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. I have not seen it on mobile, actually. So if anybody has uh, any good stories on Power BI goals and mobile, please let us know. We'd love to see them. We'd love to see them. Okay, Treb, uh, where can we get more information? Is it on community.powerbi.com? Uh, I would start with the community. Uh, there are already posts going out there as people are discovering goals. So go to the community, search on goals, you can see a number of posts. Uh, we've been working on a resource site called Get Started with Power BI Goals. Mm -hmm. So we've aggregated videos from both uh, Marquee and from Power BI Tips. Thank you, Mike and Tommy. Uh, and we're put, we've got blog posts. We're going to have a download section coming soon. So we might have some other stuff that you can uh, add to your solution there. And again, please go to the community. Please ask those questions. We learn better together and it helps to have a centralized repository. And lastly, if you need if you have a question, feel free to contact me at hello at marqueeinsights.com. Be more than happy to answer your questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Treb. Right. And now uh, I think uh, Mike uh, and uh, Tommy are going to do a demo. Do you think they're ready? Daniel, is uh, so. Mike and Tommy ready? Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, I thought I heard them knocking, so I'll let yeah, them in. Yeah, they're knocking on the door. Okay. <laughs> so Hi. Knocking. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi, Tommy. How are you today? Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We're happy to be here. We're happy to do some demos. Uh, we've been getting our feet wet with goals as well, yep. figuring out where they fit in our organizations, trying to figure out how they apply to what we're going to be building. And so we just wanted to do a quick couple demos here just to get your how to make a scorecard, how to make your first goal, mm -hmm. and then how to connect some of that data directly to Power Bay Reports. Awesome. And I can't wait to hear uh, all of the stuff that Treb talked about uh, in your demo. And thank you, Treb, for that fantastic intro, uh, setting context for this demo. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I'll, I'll just go ahead and share my screen here. It looks like we've got our screen shared. Was, okay. So first thing I want to present to you is just kind of the standard portal, PowerBI.com. So what you'll do is you'll log into your PowerBI.com experience. This would be your homepage likely. And where you'll find goals is you'll find it here on the left-hand side of the screen in a little icon it's like a trophy and it's listed by goals. So we'll click on this goals icon on the left-hand side. This mm -hmm. will bring you to your goals homepage. This is where all of your goals will live. I don't have any goals created currently. And so what you first need to do is create a scorecard. And so a scorecard would be a collection of various goals that you would have inside your workspace or your organization. Uh, quickly run through this screen as well. Um, there are a number of demo pieces here at the very beginning of this page. You can look at the educational sample, sales sample, and marketing samples. These are just to trigger your idea or your mind to think about some ideas and how you would use a goal, how you might implement that inside your environment. Below that, we have an area where you can see, once you have goals, all of your recents, your favorites, anything that was shared with you, and then looking at all of your scorecards with all of your goals in one location. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll also have a little search window that I'd like to point out. If you get a lot of goals or a lot of scorecards, you can quickly search for things that are in your goals or scorecards, and those values will re reveal themselves to you. For this demo, I'm going to show you how to create your first scorecard. And we will do so by clicking one of the three items across the screen. We have a new scorecard in the upper right-hand corner. We have a create, create your own scorecard under the recommended section. And then finally, down here at the bottom, we have a create scorecard down at the bottom of the page. So we really want you to get started. There's a lot of buttons to do the same action. Clicking New Scorecard will bring up a little dialog box, and I'll fill in the information here. First, you'll have to name your scorecard. So this will be Mike's scorecard. Call it Yearly Goals. And then you'd enter a description. Now, I do recommend providing a robust description about what this is going to be doing. It helps other people who are discovering these goals or looking at them, or if you're sharing them with other people, it gives you an ability to describe what's going on there. So these, uh, this is my goal for 2022. Now I do have an option for sensitivity labels. This is an organizational option that you can set up. The sensitivity labels are available in your Microsoft Security 365 account. I don't have them set up here for this demo, 
So uh, you can do those, but these are not managed in Power BI.com. They're managed at the uh, security level with your sensitivity labels in your data. The last part here I do want to point out is we have to pick our workspace. We can pick the workspace we want to put this scorecard in. And I have a demo workspace called Demo Goals. Or you can create the checkbox right below that and create a brand new workspace to put the scorecard in. So if I click the Create Workspace option, hopefully, it will let me or not let me. OK, maybe it won't let me click that one. So if it would let me click the option, you'll have a list of items there where you can select the different um, workspaces or the options for your workspace. But for this demo, I'm just going to simply apply the workspace for demo goals. Clicking Create, I'll create a brand new scorecard. So I'm going to be clear about this. This is the scorecard portion. And now that I'm here, I can then create a series of goals inside this environment that I can enter information into. To do, the, to do so, I'll click the new goal item in the very middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. We can enter a name for my goal. So this could be sales goals. And then you can even make things specific for like quarter one or quarter two or whatever you want for your organization. You'll have an owner. And then you'll have current and target values that you can enter in manually or connect up to some data inside your Power BI reports. So for this one, I will type in the number 1,000. Now, I do want to be note, a note here. I was, it tricked me up a little bit at the first time uh, when I did this. If I put in 1,000, you'll note that the formatting automatically changes to 1K for 1,000. So mm -hmm. the formatting will automatically adjust for you based on that field. Now, there are some options to change the formatting up here at the mm -hmm. top when you click into the window. Uh, but there are uh, limited options for changing the thousands or millions operator inside the actual targets. It's trying to abbreviate that so you can easily see uh, I think we need to go to ideas.powerbi.com and add that idea in there for goals, exactly. for Power BI goals. Exactly right. <laughs> so there, there, I think it will be more features are coming uh, with this in the future. So uh, keep using these and the more usage that we see in the community, the more we'll probably get new features for this. And then the target here, so explaining the target, we have the current value. This is the kind of an entry data point on when the current value of that data point occurred. And then the target value can be something that you're expecting to get to. This is the expected location. If I uh, want my target to be 200, I can now enter that in as well. Next, you can have the status. And these are the various statuses you can pick from that are in the program. and for now, I'll just click, pick the option called on track. And then you can also select a date range for when these are valid date ranges. Uh, you click the little calendar item here and click the end of quarter one, which would be March 31st of 2022. With that, you can hit save. And that will be your first goal creation inside the, your scorecard. Mm -hmm. And that kind of wraps up our demo just around building your first right. scorecard and your first goal. Um, I think we just had a question from Christian. Um, you know, he hasn't had time to understand what the difference is between um, goals and Power BI KPIs visual, and why should I choose one over the other? I think that's a great question. Thank you, Christian, for your for your question. For your question, that's a great question. And what and one thing we'll we'll note here is goals can be attached to any report anywhere in your organization. Mm -hmm. So goals are a bit more generic. It's a bit higher level. You would think about goals will likely be something that you'll use with your C-levels or VP-level reporting around key metrics. Again, Treb was talking about your OKRs earlier, which makes a lot of sense to track these larger entities of our sales, our productivity, uh, something that we need to make sure that we're aligning to our corporate objectives for our, for our company. So the goals that you see here, this is purely a Power BI service-related feature. You can't really enter in goals as easily inside Power BI Desktop. The KPI card visual is something that is a visual inside Power BI Desktop where you would add a data model to your Power BI report. And then from that data model, you'd build a KPI card. You could pin those cards, but it doesn't really help you get across multiple reports or roll up larger portions of your organization into a single scorecard area. So with that, I think I'd actually like to transition. This is a good point. How do we connect this data into reports Tommy, uh, I think you've got a demo around being able to actually bolt on a goal and add the data directly from report. Yeah. Goals. Yeah. And to Christian's point, we actually, our Chicago Power BI user group talked just about that narrative. So exactly. check that out on Power BI Tips. Uh, we have the whole video up. But yeah, so let's take Mike's 
example and then build on that with actually connecting to data points and see how that kind of story fits together. So I'm going to go to one of my more important uh, scorecards I already have set up here. And if we actually go to the screen, let's see. Okay. Oh, good. It's completed now. So it looks like indeed Mike Carlo does only uh, cannoli. It's completed. I I do have a check in here that we can see. Let's let's check that out and see what they say. Okay. It looks like it was checked in 30 minutes ago. And okay, pistachio cannolis. Good. See now I have this really high level uh, view of understanding my goals completed. I cannot wait to follow through on that. So let's take the example of the manual. But let's connect to a card, a bar chart, and a line chart in a Power BI reports. The great part of this is this, no matter what workspace your scorecard's in, you can connect to any report in your tenant you have access to. So let's start with the simple one. We're going to edit. We're going to create a new goal. We'll call this the card demo. I'm just going to ask you to repeat that, Tommy, because that's a brilliant point. That is yeah. like mind blowing. Can you please repeat about uh, repeat that yeah. about your workspace and having so, access? So. Unlike uh, well, any scorecard you create, no matter what to workspace it's in, if you have access to a report throughout the entire tenant, uh, you can connect to that report. And we'll show you exactly how that looks. That's so, awesome. Thank we'll you. Do, yep. We'll do a card demo and we'll say revenue year to date. And what I'm going to do is under the current, like what Mike did, he said uh, he entered the value. I'm going to click on connect to data. Okay. Let's do that. And you can see here, you can see all my reports. I can even go by through my apps, share with me, favorites. In the top right, you can actually expand the screen, which makes it easier to see. And I'm going to go to one of my favorites. We're going to do my Van Arstel. We'll click connect on the bottom left. And you can see now my entire report shows up. So again, let's do a simple one here. I have the full access, uh, everything I can do in a report. I'm just going to click on the bar chart on the or the line, the card on the top left. And you'll see that Power BI is telling me what I select. In this case, it's a simple card, pretty simple. It tells me what the current value is. We'll click connect. And you can see now that goal is tied to the data point. Whenever the report updates, so will this data point. I'll enter a manual target here. We'll make this, uh, we'll say 14%. We'll make it a percentage. I like one decimal place and we'll save that. So that's just the card. Pretty straightforward, so pretty simple. But let's kind of build on that. Let's do a bar chart. And uh, let's do, you know, the neat thing about connecting to any data point in Power BI is unlike the card where obviously that's an aggregate, we're going to use that interactive features and pick a subset of the bar chart. So I'm going to say bar and we'll say three months. We're also going to use our slicers and really show something dynamic. So let's connect the data. Again, I'm going to choose a report that exists anywhere in my tenant. So I'm going to choose a different report. And we'll click connect. My whole report shows up. Now, this entire report is actually driven by the slicer on the top left. Everything's a rolling average or something to do with the last current months, which is based on the top left slicer. In this case, I'm going to do three months for six months. So how do we do that in just a scorecard? Well, again, I'm going to go to the bikes in the middle. And you can see there's a few tool tips here. I'm going to click on bikes on that data point. And you can see right away, Power BI is telling me the categories bikes is telling me what I'm filtering, just like the fun, uh, the filter icon. And it's showing me what the months rolling are. Now, because there's tool tips, I don't have to pick the primary measure. I can actually choose whichever one I want. In this case, I'm going to choose products with profit. And I'm going to click, click on connect. Now let's go back and let's do the six months. I always want to compare this first, the previous six months. Connect to data, choose the same report. And now I'm going to go to my slicer on the top right, make that six months. You can see everything changes. Choose bikes again. And you can see now it shows me everything, categories, bikes. The month's rolling average is six. Go to my products with profit. And that's my current value. Now there's a few more features you can do here, like dynamic statuses. So whenever the current's above the target, make it on track, or if it's 95% to target, make it at risk. But let's save that for now. And let's finally do a line chart because when I collect, when I connect to the data point, it actually starts a data set. And you can see here, when I click on the, one of the goals, you can see it starts on the day I created it. But what if I want more historical data right off the bat? That's what a line chart does. So let's 
choose one more goal. Let's connect the data. Now I'm going to choose the report that we saw originally. Click on Next. Expand the screen. So again, now I'm actually going to choose the line chart. Once I click on it, you can actually see that there's two options here. I can either track all the data points in the series or just this data point. Just this data point shows what we did before. It starts on the day you created the goal or connected to the data set. Tracking all the data points in the series actually allows me to go back in time for however long the line chart's showing. In this case, I think it's through 2015. So let's choose that option, which is the default. We'll choose our uh, six months rolling percentage and we'll click connect. I'll make this a percentage and I'll just make the manual, uh, let's say 30, just so we end on something that's on track. And we'll save. Now you can actually see that the historical numbers here and the history is actually showing me all the daily changes. Now there's a lot more settings you can do here. Uh, Power BI Tips has a great video series that they're building on right now to kind of show all these components. But I now have all this history that I can even track back and see where we're at. So that's a card, a bar chart, and a line chart. And these are just the simple demos of it. So pretty neat. This is fantastic. I love it. I love the tool tips, you know, having the drop down there so I don't have to sit there and search for for what we um what we need to see and i love the customization and you know it, it could be for execs and you know c-level executives but it can also be for small business right but is it um available on pro or premium per user what what is the um so we'll bring, yeah bring mike back on it he's a yeah. partner of crime, <laughs> but uh yeah so this is actually something that we figured out at the chicago user group where it's actually it used to be premium only now mm -hmm. it's pro so if you have pro which you probably do you can use goals. So, so Nancy asks, how do you configure the data options? So everything Tommy showed you here in both the card, the bar chart, and the line chart area, all of that is configured by clicking into the connect data button. Oh. And then you get navigate, you're able to navigate to a report, an app, something shared with you, anything that's data related into any of your reports, no matter mm -hmm. where it is, you can click on any data point in that chart and the filter context. And what we mean by filter context is anything that's filtering that single data point will be revealed back to you. And then you can see what were selected there. So as Tommy had a demo of, I have a three months rolling calculation or six months rolling calculation based on a, a slider on the page that was being used as a data input to control the target versus the actual uh, right. three months rolling average. So the, the amount of possibilities you have with yeah. all the data points, all the filtering inside a report is almost limitless is what you can do with these reports. So it adds a really rich layer of full control and you're not having to write code. You click on the report, you click on the data points, you see what comes out and then you hit save. That's basically how you configure the data points. More or less, if you know how to click in data in Power BI, you know how to use goals. Exactly right. <laughs> There's another question here uh, really briefly no, up in the I'm list here that, that talked about how can I navigate from the goal directly into the report? And I believe I Tommy and I, yeah. yeah, I think we actually have a demo of that as well. Tommy, can you do a quick demo of that sure. one too while you're still here? I think you've got some goals. You've already linked them mm -hmm. to data points. Yep. So now if you could just show us how do you get back to the report directly from the goal? Let's do it. Okay. All right. So I got my score cut up. Now, again, because the uh, the bottom three, the card, the bar, and the line are all connected to a Power BI report, what I actually do when I hover over and I'm when I'm I have to go in read mode in the top left. Yes. I'm gonna go read mode. When I hover over, you'll notice that there's this little bar that shows up. Looks like I don't know, like the original Power BI icon, a little, a little. Uh, and that actually lets me know as a consumer that hey, this is connected to a Power BI report. So let's actually connect on the bike one because I think that's a really good example. I'm going to click on the bar chart. It's going to open a new tab and it's going to use all of Power BI's features to actually do spotlight and automated insights. So a consumer knows, hey, we know exactly what you clicked on. This is what the goal is connected to. And you can see it's actually going to remember the slicer in the top left. It's remembering the three. So if you had that filter, I uh, changed the six as your current. That's what it's going to show up. It's going to remember all of the filter contexts. Just in the same way, if we do the line chart, I'll click on to connect to this value. It's going to spotlight that again if there's automated insights, or it's going to um, and it's going to spotlight saying this is what that goal is connected to. This is what that actual is connected to. So this is 
again and all the anomalies here and the trends actually show up if you have a kpr card it might show you that too so it's really powerful in terms of telling the the right narrative so it's a really good demo it's a strong strong tool mm -hmm. uh again i think this is an underrated value proposition mm -hmm. for people who are using power bi the the change here that i think from our standpoint it was premium feature before microsoft ignite right. 2021 and now after ignite it was announced that this is now a pro level cool. feature so i want to be very clear if you are a power bi pro user you can already use this today. This is something that's integrated and already into your workflows. So go start using it. We really like it. And I think it'll be a great feature that you can use inside your organization right away. Yep, 100%. Love this demo. Thank you, Mike and Tommy. And let's uh, let's bring um, Treb back. And remember, I think that uh, Mike and Tommy and Treb have got, oh, Mike and Tommy have a series on community.powerbi.com on goals. And I think it'll be posted either later today. It's our first episode, everyone. We're doing, you know, this soft launch. So give us a few hours to post all these videos. And we'll yep. post the links in the video description below. And that's on community.powerbi.com. Make sure you register to get all of the benefits of the community. And we are back. And I have two yep. things to share. Uh, before I found my <laughs> IXL, I see my oh. Excel t shirt. With all right. In Excel. And there it is. All right. Yeah, a nod see? to Trab and his good cause. Um, I quite, uh, Kelly, um, while Trab was chatting, um, Tommy and I were, were backstage and having our ongoing Mets versus Yankees fight. Mm -hmm. But we noticed that you have some packages, two gifts behind you. Are those for Tommy and I? No, they are for the community. <laughs> and I'm glad you uh, brought them up because uh, this is part of our community celebration here. Uh, let's just see which one. Which one shall I open? I'll open this one. So if uh, you are so inclined to go to community.powerbi.com and register and pop a data story up in our data stories gallery about Power BI goals or data types or Power BI kids. Give us a comment on what features you like. We're going to pick randomly some people who can uh, get to have some of these stickers. Ta -da! And then also we have these stickers here and Power BI and then our Power BI women sticker. And also for the data story of the month, we're going to pick five people and we'll be sending them some power bi lanyards i'm not sure if you can uh, these upside down hang on have i got them the right way up now i'm not doing really well today on this <laughs> but they're um, a great lanyard and then we also have as you know i love pinwheels we've got the yellow pinwheels here but we have some pinwheel stickers here with the power platform da -da -da -da. and so we'll be giving away stickers we'll be giving away some of these uh, glasses wipes and uh, power bi magnets so Go ahead and register. Kudo some posts. Put a data story in the data stories gallery. Show us what you're doing with Power BI and tell us, give us some feedback about the show, what you'd like to see, what's good, what's bad. Be brutally honest because we want the best for you and the community and we want to celebrate you. So make sure that you go to community.powerbi.com. Okay, so thanks for um, asking about that, Belinda. That was really cool. My pleasure. <laughs> I can take a swipe at uh, Tommy and his love for the Yankees. I do. I know. Let's go. Right? Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, Yankees. Oh. Mariners. Mariners. Yeah. And I've also got a fris I've got a frisbee too that I'm going to give away to somebody. Oh, well. nice! I like that. Yeah, we've Wonderful. got some other fun stuff. But yeah, this has been a great time um, for us, and I can't wait to celebrate the community, everyone. How are you feeling today? Oh, How are you feeling great. about the show? Yeah. I think I'm it went great. For all I'm relieved today. now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Chat has been awesome. The demos went well. It was smooth. We were happy to have those out there. There's a ton more videos coming. Uh, so we hope you guys can get engaged with the community. We love the community. Um, it, it has helped my career immensely. So uh, definitely plug in, get involved, and we'll see you outside around on the yeah. community. And just, yeah, absolutely. Just mention, without oh, breaking ahead, my sorry. NDA, without breaking my NDA, <laughs> Look at the roadmap, folks. There is more to come from goals shortly. That's about as much as I can say because they have published what they're working on. Correct. You want to check it out. It's good stuff. Definitely. I know. It'd be awesome, won't it? And uh, look, Belinda, thank you so much. Treb, 
Thank you. And Mike and Tommy. (laughs) (laughs) Mike and Tommy, thank you. Indira, Medha, everyone. My Power BI women, if you want to join our user group, go to aka.ms forward slash Power BI women and join our user group there. The amazing Denisha Malone and Jackie Chiardi uh, co-lead those. And we have some meetings a couple of times a month. Um, In the interim, please, 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 let's uh, have you register at community.powerbi.com and help us help you with giveaways. Go chat with your peers, super users, product teams, user groups, whatever you do. And so anyhow, um, thanks again, everyone, for joining. That's all for this week. Let's give everyone a a big wave. If you have any questions um, unanswered, we'll try and get to those in the next day or so. Again, thanks, everyone, for joining, and we will meet you in the community. Yes.